Psalm 91 verse 16 was a theme for the night. He says, with long life, I will satisfy you. And you say, amen. And then we blow our trumpet. Are you ready? It says, with long life, I will satisfy you. Amen.
the payment for my sins was the precious lamb he gave but now it's a life and that's an empty grave well I know my redeemer lives well I know my redeemer lives I know he lives I know he lives Now the payment for Seems was a precious lamb he gave, but now is a life in there, it's an empty grave. Well, I know my redeemer lives, and I know my redeemer. Leaves. I know he lives. I know he lives. He lives. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, thank you, Father. We are indeed grateful that you're alive forevermore. Our high priest is alive. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And Lord, even as we go on this broadcast today, we ask that you will breathe on us. We ask that you will speak to us. We ask that you will change our lives in the name of Jesus. Let your truth be heard. Let your voice be heard. All over the world we pray in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you all the praise and all the glory. And everyone that believes says, Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's such a joy to be here with you this evening, just sharing in this wonderful atmosphere of the presence of the Lord. We are grateful that our God is alive. Yes, the sound of sickness, disease, and death all over the world, but we know that our Redeemer is alive. And because he lives, we live and we live forevermore. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, I don't know which part of the world you are watching from today. If you don't mind, you can let us know where you're reaching us from today. We celebrated you from all over the world a few days ago. or One of those, um, I think the last two broadcasts we had, somebody was viewing in all the way from India. We had people from the UK and from all over the places. So please let us know where you're watching us from. And wherever you are watching from today, we know the Lord will do something new in your life. It will bless you, keep you, preserve you, even in these unusual times in Jesus' precious name. If there's anything you realize since you started joining us online, you know we've decided as a family, as a church family, to make Psalm 91 one of our confessions before the Lord. And any other scripture really that can be a blessing to you, but we've just loved and chosen Psalm 91 because of the power that it contains. And my wife, Pastor Tolu, was encouraging us some time ago that we cannot wear Psalm 91 out. So don't think maybe you're using it too much. No, you can't wear it out. God gave us for such a time as this. So let's get into Psalm 91 before we go into the teaching. We're going to make our bold declaration before the Lord as we personalize Psalm 91 right now. So it says, he will dwell in the secret place of the Most High. So we say, because I dwell in the secret place of the Most High, I abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him I will trust. Surely... He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler. Say amen to that. And from the perilous pestilence. 
He shall cover me with his feathers, and under his wings I shall take refuge. His truth shall be my shield and buckler. I shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by the day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness. Say that boldly. Nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Now say this with the whole of your heart. Say, a thousand may fall at my side and 10,000 at my right hand, but it shall not come near me. Only with my eyes shall I look and see the reward of the wicked, because I have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, my dwelling place. No evil shall befall me, nor shall any plague come near my dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. In their hands they shall bear me up, lest I dash my foot against a stone. Amen. All right, as we are about to go into today's teaching, I want you to look for that icon on your Facebook app. If you're watching via Facebook that says host or watch party, you can click on that so that your friends and family will be able to tune in and be a part of today's broadcast. Or you can just simply share the, um, the link on whatever platform you have to your friends and family so that they can also participate today. I believe that God has sent me with a message to the body of Christ and indeed to his church today to put some peace right there because the last two weeks, the entire social media platforms have just been bombarded with all kinds of audio files, um, messages, conspiracy theories, and all kinds of questions are out there. So a lot of people are scared and wondering what's really going on. I had church members who sent me private messages and asking me to comment on some of those files, and they just wanted to know exactly where we are and what is going on in our world. And by the grace of God, I'll try to deal with some of those today, and, and hopefully I'll get feedback from you as to which other areas you want us to be able to touch on by the grace of God. So, the first one I want to deal with today is, I know this might make some of you giggle because you, you've heard the truth about it and you know what the truth is. Some people have said, Pastor, is it true that the um, coronavirus is just a cover-up for the 5G technology? Yes, you, you've heard that question and all over the social media that it was just a cover-up that the governments of the world have decided to implement a technology that's not healthy for mankind and they decided to cover it up with coronavirus. Um, at the surface, you will have thought it sounded a bit absurd until those individuals started backing it up with fictitious facts and all kinds of things. And thank God um, the, the Nigerian government has spoken out about that and some other governments in the world have also spoken about that, that the 5G technology obviously, obviously is not as harmful as, been, as it's been portrayed and it has just a, a solution and an improvement on what we have right now. Okay. But that brought up a question um, or a thought in my heart. If the coronavirus is real, if the coronavirus is a cover-up for 5G technology and that the real problem is 5G technology, and th that got me thinking about the idea of sickness and disease altogether. And I just want to say something to us that's very important here today, that no matter what the cause of the sickness or the ailments are, no matter what it is that's killing people, either the coronavirus or the 5G technology, even if the technology has some um, downsides and some adverse effects, whatever it is, we as God's children must remember who we are. We are the children of God. And we just went through Psalm 91. We have a covenant of security with God. God has promised that he will keep us from evils. You will not be afraid of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays with at noonday. No matter what's destroying people, God doesn't want us to be afraid of it. No. He says, we eat that dwells in the secret place of the most, I shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We have God as our covering. Hallelujah. And, and you must never forget that. Whatever the cause of sickness is, 
God is our protection. God is our shield, is our buckler. And even if somebody's already infected, like we've always said, and, or somebody is sick right now, we have our God as the healer. He is the one that heals all our diseases. Exodus 15, 26, God says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. So even if you're sick in your body right now and you think it's coronavirus, we have a healing Jesus. Even if it's another ailment, we have a healing Jesus. And no matter the cause of sickness or disease, God is still the healer. In John chapter 4, there, there was a story there about Jesus meeting with a man at the pool of Bethesda. And the Bible told us that the, woman, the man now, John chapter 5, let me just take the story from verse 5. He, he said to us that now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he was already, or that he already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But where, while I'm coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. Hallelujah. And that day was a Sabbath. Now, I just want you to go all the way down now to verse 14. Verse 14, John chapter 5, it says, Afterwards, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. What's Jesus saying here? Jesus says, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. It kind of sounds to me like Jesus was warning him that the man has been made well already, but if he does not change his ways, something bigger can come. It means that the sickness in the first place came because of the man's sin. The man must have done something wrong. That's why the man took ill. That's, man, that's why the, for 38 years, the, it was, it was, it was the, a, a self-inflicted sickness, if you can put it that way. It was caused by the man himself, yet Jesus healed him. So even if you've made a mistake with your diet, you've done something wrong and you're ill, it does not mean God does not care about you and does not mean God is not interested in healing you. You can still ask him to heal. He is the healer. So even if coronavirus is man-made, God is still the healer. Hallelujah. Even if it's as a result of our weakness or wickedness, God is still the healer. And I just wanted that truth to ring in your heart today. No matter what caused the sicknesses and the diseases in our world today, we have and we serve a God who heals. So even if you made a personal mistake, you did something wrong, I need you to know that God will heal you. So even if it's 5G technology bringing sickness and disease, we have a healer. Even if it was man inflicted, we have a healer. And I need that to register in your heart. Because what that does is that no matter what other conspiracy about this sickness is thrown out, you will not be afraid because you know God is with you. It will protect you. It will keep you. And you know, even if you fall sick, God will heal you. Hallelujah. And that's very important that we take note of that, that we serve the healing Jesus and we serve one that keeps us safe at all times. Now, I want to just try to go on to a second part of the questions that, 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 that's been coming out. So some of the conspiracies have also included something like Bill Gates is sponsoring and the idea that once the antivirus is found, it should be placed on people's foreheads or at the back of their right hands, and, and that that's in sync with what the Bible told us about the mark of the beast, about the Antichrist when he comes. So people have asked the question, Pastor, is it true? Is the antivirus the mark of the beast? Let's just go to that scripture, Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13. I need you to see something that's very interesting here. In Revelation chapter 13, the Bible told us about the beast and the mark of that beast. Let me just take it from verse 15 now. Revelation chapter 13 from verse 15. And here begins the reading of God's word. It says, 
he was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as will not worship the image of the beast to be killed. So notice, he gave power to the beast to speak, and as many as will not worship the image of the beast will be killed. It causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads. And no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Yeah, so you, you saw that. It says, without the mark of the beast, people will not be able to buy or sell, and, and that um, the number is 666. Now, let me quickly say something to you about that. It means the Antichrist is not subtle about the number. You, you, heard, you heard that right. The Antichrist is not deceiving people to collect the number. The Bible didn't tell us that the Antichrist was looking for a trick or used the trick or looking for a subtle way of getting people to take the number and before they realize what was happening, wow, they have the mark of the beast. No, the, by the time this happens, the Antichrist boldly proclaims himself as God and encourages people to bow and worship. And anyone that does not bow is killed. Before they are killed, they will not be able to buy. They will not be able to sell. So it's not a subtle message. It's not, a, it's not it's the, 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 the mark of the beast will not be disguised. <laughs> So you're not going to be caught taking the mark before you realize you've taken it. No, it's going to be a conscious, deliberate choice to take the mark of the beast. Pastor, are you sure? Let me give you a little scriptural reference to confirm that to you. You remember um, when uh, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were taken down to Babylon, and when the king made this big image, and the king said everyone should bow at the sound of music. And anyone who does not bow was going, to, was going to be thrown into the fairy furnace. You remember that. Now, the king was not, it was not subtle. It was, it, was, it was loud about it. He said, bow or you're going to be thrown into the fire. And the three Hebrew children said they were not going to bow. That for them, they made up their minds. We, we took that reference, I think it was last week Wednesday. I was, I was still touching on that reference. That they said, we're not going to bow. We're not going to bow to this image. It was not a subtle thing. It was right in their faces. So they had a choice and they refused. And they were thrown into the fire. And thank God, God showed himself as the mighty deliverer. So the Antichrist is not subtle about the number. It's not a trick, true antivirus. And then get people, no, he wants to assert himself as God. And so if anyone does not bow to him, he wants to kill them. He wants to make them suffer. So you cannot mistakenly take the mark of the beast. It's not possible. Let me give you another reference. You remember Matthew chapter 4, Luke chapter 4, both spoke about the temptation of Jesus by the devil. And one of the things the devil did was he told Jesus to turn the stone to bread, and Jesus said, no, man shall not live by bread alone. And then he told, the Bible says he showed, he, he took Jesus to the pinnacle of the temple and to ask him to jump down from there. And then, oh, and then Jesus said, you should not tell the Lord thy God. And then the Bible says he took him to a high mountain, and he showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory thereof. And he said, all of this I will give to you if you bow down and worship. It was not subtle about it. He said, if you bow, and then I will give it to you. And Jesus had the choice. Hallelujah. And so the same way in Genesis 13, the beast was not subtle about it. The Bible said that, and, and, and he said, and, um, verse 15, and he, he granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast would both speak and cause many as would not worship the image to be killed. And it causes all both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave to receive a mark. And anyone who does not have the mark cannot buy or sell. So he's not subtle about it. So Bill Gates or anybody else in the world, they're not going to try to trick you into taking the mark of the beast. No. By the way, you won't even be here by then to the glory of God. You, you won't be around because there's such an event called the rapture that will take place before that. So don't even worry about the mark of the beast. 
That's not your portion in Jesus' name. Okay? It's not your portion in Jesus' name. So, I believe the antivirus is not the mark of the beast. If it will be, we will not be here by then. All right? So, don't worry. Nobody's going to trick you in buying Gary and then, boom, you have the mark of the beast. Or take uh, anti-malaria and, boom, it's the mark of the beast. Even if you start putting chips on people, that's still not the mark of the beast. It's going to come with worship. What the devil wants is to assert himself as God. And anybody that does not worship him or take his mark will be in trouble. And you will not be in trouble in Jesus' name. Hmm. I know that just stirred up a whole new set of questions in someone's heart. I'm trusting God that we're going to get deeper into this thing as we go on. Let me try to attempt one more question. And, and that has to do um, with the idea, some people were saying, the coronavirus is at the end of the world itself. Oh, this coronavirus, is it going to wipe out the entire mankind? Is it going to lead to the destruction of everyone? And this earth is going to be destroyed by coronavirus. Um, let me say that, no, sir, that's not true. That's not accurate by any means, by any account. And it's the reason we need to get into the Bible and read these things for ourselves so that nobody can pull a wool over your face concerning this fact. The world is not going to end through the virus just like we know the words are going to end through water because God made that covenant and God says it will not destroy all of mankind with water anymore as as had that covenant we know what we know that's not going to happen we know this world is going to end just by walls and all of that no this world will be destroyed at the end of the day there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth but the earth will not be destroyed by water or by sickness it's going to be destroyed by fire this entire world as we have it today will be consumed it will be set on fire at the end of the day peter wrote about this peter wrote about it in in second peter chapter three second peter chapter three i want you to please open up your bible so just i'm sure it's going to come up on the screen as well second peter chapter three i'll take it from verse 10 to verse 13 Second Peter chapter 3 from verse 10 to 13. It says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise. Now, by the way, let, let me stop there and say something. It said it's going to come as a thief in the night. And, and Jesus told us in Matthew 24 that no one knows the hour, no one knows the time that's going to take place. <laughs> Some people have been given ideas of, of dates and time that these things will happen. You know, it's nothing new. It's been said from generation to generation. There are people that have predicted the world will end on a certain day and the world did not end that day. Oh, this will happen on a certain day. It did not happen that day. Oh, the rapture will take place on a certain day and it did not happen that day. Because God said no one will know. That's why, again, he's using the, 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 the explanation or the description of a thief in the night. No one knows. Well, except you live in a certain part of the world where they say, Criminals will write a letter in advance or give a notice. We're coming to your estate, um, and, there's, and there's nothing people can do about it in those part of the world. But, but that's not how God operates, okay? No one knows the time that is going to come. It says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. You read that right. But the earth and all the works, all the houses, all the schools, all the companies, all the buildings, everything will be burned up. But the heavens and the earth will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Hallelujah! He said, we look for a new heaven and new earth, new heavens and new earth. And the truth is, according to Revelation chapter 21, there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Hallelujah. Revelations 21, Revelations 21 from verse 1. He says, now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. 
Also, there was no more sea. So, this heaven and earth will pass away. And it's not going to pass away by coronavirus. It's going to pass away by fire. It will be burnt up. It will be completely destroyed. But again, we will not be here by then. And, and, and then Peter, uh, Peter now said, he said, we look forward to a new heaven and a new earth. Look, we know these things are going to happen. And for us, we're not, we're, not, we're not bothered. We're not afraid. And you should not be afraid of the end of this age. God has said this, this, this age will end. Now, let me say this to you. If every time you hear about Jesus' second coming, you hear about the rapture, you hear about the end of the age, if you are usually frightened or you're scared, even where you are watching this right now, if you're saying, ah, pastor, um, this thing you are saying like this, I'm afraid of it, I'm afraid, then you need to check your life. Maybe there are areas of your life that you need to make amends. Maybe there are areas of your life that you need to adjust. Or maybe you're not even saved at all. It's the right time for you to give your life to Jesus. If there's fear in your heart, it means there's something you need to check out there. He said again, back to um, 2 Peter chapter 3, 2 Peter chapter 3, he says in, in verse 11, Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, since the heavens will be dissolved, since the earth will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Since we know these things will happen, he said we ought to be godly people. We, we ought to walk in holiness. Our lifestyles should be different. We should prepare for it because we know it's going to happen. We know it's coming. So we should not be afraid. In fact, let, let, me, let, me, let me take you to one more reference. First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians. Because um, it's important, it's important that, that I lay this foundation lay well. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So First Thessalonians um, chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4. This, this, we often speak this scripture to ourselves from time to time. It says from verse 13 now. Let me take it from verse 13. Um, First Thessalonians chapter 4 from verse 13. He says, but I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who are falling asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Verse 18 is beautiful. It says, therefore comfort one another with these words. Wow. It means when we talk about rapture, it's a thing of comfort for us as Christians. When we talk about the second coming of the Lord, it's a, it's a subject of comfort for us as Christians. When we talk about this world coming to an end, woo, it's, it's comforting to know the world will not continue like this. There's going to be a, a world without sickness, without disease, without pain. That's a joy. That's something for me to look forward to. I remember um, from, uh, from time to time when we want to go on vacation, I mean, I don't know anybody who hears that vacation is coming and the person is sad. <laughs> Think about that. You're thinking of going on vacation and you're sorrowful. Except you have such a large family, you know, you have to buy tickets and pay hotel bills and all of that. But, but that's even a joke. It's still a joy that you're taking care of your family. Nobody is sad about vacation because it gives the idea of rest, of peace, of joy. And, and that's the fact that you're going to spend, take some time out. So how can I tell you there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth where there'll be no more sickness, no more death, no more pain, and you're scared? It means there's something wrong with your relationship with God. If I ever told you that, look, the rapture can take place at any time and you're bothered about it, it means there's something wrong with your relationship with God and you need to fix that. So if you're listening to me right now and you're afraid, why not look into your heart? Is there something God has told you to stop that you have not stopped? I want you to make such adjustments. And if you're yet to give your life to Jesus, I want to pray with you right now so that you can make Jesus the Lord of your life. All of these things are not, they're not uh, cock and bull stories. This is, not, this is not fiction. 
It's, this is real. Jesus is coming back. The world will end. The mark of the beast is real. It's just that people have modeled up all the entire timelines and all that goes into that. But it will happen. And one of these days, is gonna, Jesus is going to come back. And I'm telling you, I'm so excited. In fact, there have been times I've said, Lord, I just wish you would come right now. And, and that's how you should be. You should long for it. If I told you you were going to go on vacation in six months' time, and then suddenly I come and I say, don't worry, all expense paid vacation next week, you will be excited. And that's how it ought to be. So wherever you are watching this broadcast today, if you have fear in your heart about the second coming of Christ, you have fear in your heart about the rapture, you have fear in your heart about the Antichrist, why not pray with me right now and give your heart to Jesus? He loves you so that the peace of God can be your portion even during this time. And so wherever you are, if you'd like to give your life to Jesus, please say this prayer with me right now. It doesn't matter if your neighbor is beside you or your brother and your sister, just please say this prayer with the whole of your heart and mean it. In fact, everyone, everywhere, wherever you are, can we just say this prayer together? Let's help those that are watching and help one another as we give our life to Christ right now. Say me, say, Heavenly Father, today I acknowledge that I am a sinner and I cannot save myself. I'm sorry for the life that I've lived. I repent of my sins and I ask you, come into my heart, come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. I repent of my sins and I accept Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for forgiveness of sin. I receive it in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for my brother and my sister who is truly asking for forgiveness right now. Who, who said that prayer genuinely? I ask that their sins be forgiven like you promised. I ask that their names be written in the book of life. I ask that nothing will take them away from you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that fear in their heart right now. Father, let the assurance of salvation be their portion. Let them live their lives for you for the rest of their days in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Now, if you give your life to Christ, to Jesus right now, you can send us a message into our inbox. Let's know that you give a life to Christ, to, G to Jesus. We want to pray with you. We want to encourage you to grow in the way of the Lord. These are interesting times. Otherwise, I will have said, I hope you, when you go to church on Sunday, you should let your pastor know about that. But now, you'll not be able to get to church on Sunday except you join us online again. So, if you send us a private mail, a private chat, a private um, inbox message, we'll be able to get back to you so that we can encourage you to grow, to be grounded in the Lord and to begin to grow in faith. And because God has so much love and care for you, I want you to know this decision is the best decision you could ever make. Now, there are two more things I want to say to you before we go into the communion right now. And the first is, please listen to this very, very important. I want to ask you, who have you been listening to? Who is your pastor? Huh. I mean, it's amazing how people just jumped on the bandwagon the social media bandwagon and just kept saying all kinds of things no you 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 can read the bible for yourself to find out what is true in fact you are even challenged to read the bible at this time read revelations read the book of matthew for yourself and don't just listen to anybody that writes anything and says anything you should know who your pastor is who's who, who has god been blessing you through who's who has god been speaking to you through you need to weigh those things before you let any funny fella become your pastor at this time. I mean, I was listening to one of those audio files and a guy was saying, you have two more years to sin. After two more years, there's no more. And I'm thinking, my God, where did he get that from? In fact, when the guy started saying, you st start praying in the name of Holy Ghost, Jesus, fire. I mean, he, was even, he didn't even know how to say, pray to God. Then you can tell, if somebody can tell you how to pray or who to pray to, then you know you're in trouble already. So there's nothing like that. Don't let just anybody draw you away from Christ and confuse you at this time. Don't give yourself over to any form of confusion. Where you're in doubt, ask your pastor. Send the message out. I appreciate those that were able to send private messages to even ask pastor, is this right? Is this wrong? And, and 
for our broadcast next week, I want to ask you to do the same thing. If you have any question in your heart, please let's have it. By next week, Wednesday, I want to be able to give you the timelines. I want to try to work the order of things as the Bible gave it to us, the order of the end time event. What's going to happen first? Is it the mark of the beast first before the rapture? Will the Antichrist come before the rapture? Or, or will Jesus, when is, when is the second final appearing of Jesus Christ? Just to help you put all those things in context so that we can understand how things will happen. Because once you have that understanding, my brother, whatever it is they send around, you'll just be smiling and laughing at these people don't even know what they're talking about. And then the second thing I want to say about that is, before you share anything on your social media handle, can you please verify the source? It's amazing how some of those broadcasts, all of a sudden, everybody's claiming to have worked with the UN, to have worked with the World Health Organization, to be a part, everybody's suddenly important now. And they are dropping facts that are not true. They are giving you scientific backgrounds that are, I mean, all kinds of nonsense over there. So before you share something to your family and friends, would you please verify it? Can you do the best you can to be sure it's authentic? Because, listen to me, you are responsible for whatever broadcast you send to me. And, and, and you, you, if you don't want to be responsible for making your family members afraid or making your own children afraid. So let me give you an idea. If, um, if, if I send a broadcast tomorrow and you see it's coming from me, now you take it with seriousness because it is me. Because you, you, you trust me, you believe me. So you give that broadcast the same level of attention. Now, it's the same way it is. If your son or if your friend who you trust sends you a broadcast, you take it with that level of seriousness. So if you send someone, send someone a broadcast, they're going to attend to that broadcast with the same level of respect or, or integrity that they accord you. That's what they, they're going to accord the broadcast. So every time you send a broadcast, it's your integrity on the line. It's your personality on the line. It's your reputation on the line. And there are people today, once I see a broadcast from them, I don't even bother because I know they're on seri they are always sharing something. Whether it's true or false, they'll just throw it out. So I have some people, in fact, there's there some people, I've even, um, what's that word now? I've blocked them. I don't want to hear anything from them because they're always, they, they like stories, they like speculating, they always like gist, always looking for something new to scare people. So I don't want to, I don't have time for this kind of people. I don't have time for this kind of people. So don't put yourself in that kind of category where somebody sees a broadcast from you and they don't even read it anymore. You should verify what you're sending to your friends. You should be careful before you throw something out there and be a part of those who are saying things that are completely fictitious, false. So please, before you share the next broadcast, can you do the best you can to be sure it is true? It's authentic. Can you verify? If you can't verify, leave it there. Delete it from your phone altogether or, your, or from your you know, device altogether. But we need to understand that we are responsible for the broadcast that we share. Whatever you broadcast, whatever you send out, you are responsible for it. So don't be responsible for spreading fear and falsehood. Let's be responsible for sharing the gospel. We are bearers of good news. The good news that Jesus died for us. Hallelujah. That's good news. Good news that even if somebody has coronavirus, Jesus can heal them. That's good news. Good news is that our God is able to keep us from evil. He says a thousand shall fall at our side. Ten thousand at our right hand. That's the kind of thing you should be sharing. Don't share. I mean, I've heard some things this last few days. I'm telling you, I've heard some things. All right, so I want to encourage you, please be responsible with whatever you share on the social media platform. We're going to go into communion now, and I'm going to ask Deton to take a song as we get ready for that. But I want to encourage you, wherever you are, all over the world, to get your bread and your wine ready. Remember, like I've told you again and again and again, if you don't have um, wine in your house, you can use juice or any other um, liquid that will be a blessing if you still can't find any other thing, you can just take a little water. A little water will do some amazing work at this time. Just put a little water in that glass. We're going to consecrate it as the, blood, as the blood of Jesus. And if you don't have the communion bread like I have it here today, I want you to take a little biscuit, 
a little bread or anything else you have that you can just use as the body of Christ. Once I bless it, it will be blessed. Once we consecrate it together, it will serve as the body of Christ and we can enjoy God together. All right? So, when we, by the time Dayton is done with this song, we will just break bread and take it together today. Amen. You're the God who was in this and is to come. Jesus, Jesus, and in you I trust my life is in your hands, Jesus, you're the miracle working God, you are Yahweh. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I hope you have your communion elements ready now. I hope you have your bread ready and you have your wine ready. The Bible tells us in Matthew 26, when they came for that last supper and as they sat to eat, Jesus began to speak to his disciples and we're just going to do exactly what Jesus did today. Lord, as we come to this table, in your name, we consecrate this bread as the body of Christ. And whatever elements the people all over the world have, Father, in your name, I consecrate it as the body of Christ right now. And I consecrate this wine and any other elements the people have all over the world. Juice, water, I consecrate it as the blood of Jesus. I ask for your breath upon them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let healing come upon the lives of people. Let grace be released afresh. In the name of Jesus, let your joy fill every home, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, let your power be released upon our lives afresh. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And Lord, if there's anyone sick, even as we partake right now, let your healing power flow through them. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke sickness and disease. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Holy Spirit. The Bible says... Matthew 26, in verse 26, as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Eat, eat of the body of Christ. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many 
for the remission of sins. Drink, drink of the blood of Christ. Once you put the cup down, can you just lift up that hand for a minute and thank him for his power at work within you? Thank him for his grace. Thank him for healing. Thank him for deliverance. Thank him for his faithfulness. Thank him because he's your God and he's your king. Say with me, say in the name of Jesus, I am healthy, I am whole, I am well, I am strong, I am victorious, I am blessed. From the crown of my head to the soles of my feet, the life of God flows through me. In the name of Jesus, say God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Say there is no fear in me. The grace of God is with me. The peace of God is my portion in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. To you be the glory. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Awesome, awesome God. You know, I'm so excited we we're able to get into some of these questions today. But like I said, next week, we want to give you the timelines, how Jesus told us these things will happen. And then I'm also hoping we can get some questions from you that we need, you want us to get into. So send your questions in. We will take a look at it and see if we can accommodate it here. Or maybe even reply you privately if it's such that we can accommodate during the teaching. But let those questions come in. Now, it's Easter season, so happy Easter to you. Hallelujah. This Friday is Easter Friday. It's Good Friday. And um, it'll be a good Friday for you and your family in the name of Jesus. No matter um, where you are in the world, I want you to, let's still celebrate God this Easter season, okay? For us as a church, we decided we're going to have a little tweak to that Sunday service. There is um, an encouragement right now for you and your family to do a song and let's have it sent it to our handle and as we as we get the song we will we will see i think the plan is to choose the top three family songs and we're going to play them as part of our broadcast on sunday yeah you heard that right so the first um the first the best three family songs that we receive we're going to play them as part of the broadcast on sunday and i want you and your family to get ready as we do that and um, we're also going to be featuring some live questions on sunday and and we'll see the first family to respond with the right answer is going to get a gift by the grace of god so i want you to get ready to be a part of all of that that we have coming so sunday is going to be a wonderful sunday and um we're just going to enjoy the goodness of the lord as a family all together so get ready get ready get ready and get your song ready uh, i'm just trying to see if i can quickly confirm this to you um the song hallelujah because i don't want you to uh just miss out on what we have coming okay so we we agreed uh because it leaves i can face tomorrow because it leaves all fear is gone um because i know he owns my future. My life is worth a living just because he lives. So you and your family, do a song. Do the song. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see your flow. Let's see your, your own unique take on it. Or maybe you're going to sing like Ditton or you can recruit her to quickly do Riaza for us now. Okay. Between now and, and Sunday. So let's have it in. We would play it and we will vote on it. And the best family is also going to get an award. Yay. Okay. Unfortunately, I can't. We, we, we can't be part of the competition, but we will still do our own song. In fact, I think we should be able to upload our own song in the next two days or so. So when I'm going to get, tell Pastor Lutu, let's do our own and drop it as well. So let's hear your family song and let's see how it goes. Hallelujah. All right, just before we round off the broadcast today, I want us to just give an offering to the Lord, if you don't mind. So get your devices ready and you can make that transfer to the account. The account is going to be on the screen anyway. So if you're giving your title, your offerings, I'm just going to speak heaven's blessings upon you right now. And you can do the transfer. Father, thank you for those giving their offerings and their tithes today. To you be the praise and glory. I ask that you bless their seed. Honor them and show your goodness and kindness upon this family even beyond this season, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen.
Don't forget on Sunday, time is going to be 9 a.m. West African time, and then our children's church is going to come on by 11 a.m. West African time. And I'm just so looking forward to this wonderful Easter celebration, and we'll continue on our eschatology next week Wednesday by the grace of God. Till I see you next time, keep the fire burning. Thanks for joining us online today. We believe you have been blessed. You can give your tithe and offering to the following accounts. Global Harvest Church, 002-858-5980, Guarantee Trust Bank. If you also want to be a part of the ongoing project in church, you can give your seed offering to Global Harvest Church, 002-858-6066, Guarantee Trust Bank. God bless you and your seed. Hope to see you online again during our future services.